Welcome back, we're here. Okay, have you heard the song? Uh, good Day by Forrest Frank. I'm about to have a good day in every single way. Sun is shining down on me. Birds are singing praise. I'm about to have a good day. It is so good. I love it so much. And Forrest Frank is like a new, well, I don't know how new of a Christian singer he is, but he, his stuff sounds just like what I like to hear. <laughs> Cause it's like a little bit of mix of like R&B, hip hop, a little bit of rap. I don't know. It's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, just right for me. <laughs> um, but it's so good. So if you like maybe that kind, or you want to try and listen to it, just go look it up. Forest Frank. And the song that I was just singing was Good Day. Okay. Um, we are now in Alma chapter 25. And guess what? This one is 18 verses. We're so excited about this. I'm really hoping the next few chapters are five verses, three verses, so I can catch up real good. <laughs> Remember, we need like 300 minutes to catch up to where we're supposed to be. Ugh, it's a lot of minutes. Okay, um, maybe if maybe if I hadn't worked at the temple, I could have read the whole time I was there. Or maybe I should have read while I was at the temple. <laughs> During my temple shift? Yeah, right. There's no way I could have read. It was pretty busy today. Ooh, looks like it took so long for me to get started. That's what happens. Ah, okay, we'll be back. Okay, we're back now from eating breakfast and cleaning up, doing Saturday chores. <laughs> I was going to try and do Saturday chores earlier, or I was going to read earlier so I could do Saturday chores at the same time as everybody else, but somehow I was just out of it. So you know that I've currently either going through perimenopause or am in menopause. I don't know what it is, but I have like this constant bleeding all the time. And so sometimes it wipes me out and sometimes it doesn't. And this morning, wiped me out. Uh, cause it's also that time of the month. I guess it does get worse during that time of the month. Still it's constant bleeding worse at that time of the month and then constant bleeding some more for the rest of the month. So pretty much oversharing and I apologize, <laughs> but I guess there's several good reasons that it's still happening, but, and that I'm allowing it, but anyways, all right. Uh, we are in Alma chapter 25. Here we are. It says, Lamanite aggression spread. The seed of the priests of Noah perish as Abinadi prophesied. Many Lamanites are converted and join the people of Nantai Nephi Lehi. They believe in Christ and keep the law of Moses. Okay, so I have some writing on here and I was like, wait, what did I write? So I wrote, wow. And this is back when I was, when did I get this copy of the Book of Mormon? Oh, look at that. I really love being able to uh, write down. Well, now I don't write it down on my, but these are all the times I read the Book of Mormon. And I wrote them down so that I could remember. I love that. I did the, oh, wow. My 10-day Book of Mormon reading challenge was back in 2017. Guess what might need to happen soon? And then, oh, I was curious when we started that. So we read the Book of Mormon uh, as a family and are reading the Book of Mormon with our family for the, for, it's like in the morning for the school year and stuff. We started that in 2018. That's pretty fun. Okay. Anyways, pretty awesome. 30 day challenge on the two in 2017, 30 day challenge, 2018. I know I've done more than that and I keep track of it now in the app. So it's kind of fun that way. All right. <clears throat> Anyways, what were we going? Where, where were we doing? Okay. And behold, it came to pass that those Lamanites were more angry because they had slain their brethren. 
Therefore they swore vengeance upon the Nephites. And they did no more attempt to slay the people of anti-Nephi-Lehi at that time. But they took their armies and went over into the borders of the land of Zarahemla and fell upon the people who were in the land of Ammonihah and destroyed them. So this is the battle of the Nephites. And after that, they had ma many battles with the Nephites in the which they were driven and slain. Wow. Okay. So remember, it was the Amalekites and the... The Amalekites and... I don't know. Now, now I'm getting all confused. <laughs> Anyways, let's see what it says here. Maybe it's because I want to say something, but then... Reddit hostess somehow knows exactly what to say because she's planned it all out. Okay, if not, it, blah, blah, blah. it is not over for the Lamanites who had not thrown down their weapons. They are now more angry and are blaming the Nephites. They want revenge payback. So they go into Nephite territory and destroy Ammonihah. Remember that we have gone back in time here in Alma 17, 20 to 27. By this point, Alma and Amulek had been to and left the land of Ammonihah. Ammonihah had burned the women and children, believers, uh, and children believers, and cast out others. All that was left there were the wicked. So in Alma chapter 16, okay, see that's what I was trying to get to. In Alma chapter 16, we learned that this city was utterly destroyed by the Lamanites, and these Lamanites in this chapter are the ones that did that. So this is when that happened. The irony here is that these Lamanites had formed their army because of the believers in their own land. And now they are destroying the Nephites who had cast out the same kind of believers among them. What? I promise I wasn't thinking of anything else. I was reading and I didn't, I don't understand that sentence. Okay, it says, the irony here is that these Lamanites, okay, the ones that are fighting, had formed their army because of the believers in their own land. okay, to try and fight against them, right? And now they are destroying the Nephites, okay, who had cast out the same kind of believers among them. Oh, man. This is where it gets so confusing. I'm like, huh? In verse 3, it explains that there were more battles and we get the Nephites side back in Alma 16. This was when the chief captain, Zoram, went to the prophet Alma for guidance, and the Lord guided Alma in what the army should do, and they obeyed that counsel. That is why the Lamanites were driven and slain here in verse 3. All right. I could spend a little bit more time to try and understand what this means, but I'm just glad that the people who were burning up the wicked, um, or the people who were burning up the righteous peeps were the wicked peeps, and I'm just glad that they got destroyed. Now, the rest of the details, I don't know if I need those. <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, I don't understand that. And that's okay. And we're moving on, <laughs> you know. But then there's those times where I'm like, really want to figure it out. And so I keep reading and keep figuring out. Um, but here is a case where I'm like, you know, I'm not going to keep spending time on it. I'm just glad that those wicked peeps who were burning up families were destroyed. And that's what matters, that the Lord gave them their comeuppance. You know what I mean? That is what you get for burning peeps, to be destroyed yourselves. Okay, verse 4. And, and, and what's awesome is that um, Alma and Amulek didn't have to worry about doing that themselves because the Lord took care of it. Or I guess the Lamanites took care of it. The wicked will destroy the wicked and... So then maybe that's why they didn't feel like having to do that. Because, you know, when you, um, like, I know from just like reading a lot of uh, books about PTSD and stuff, war takes a toll on those who are battling and, and fighting. And the less people that you can kill, the less PTSD you'll have. <laughs> I guess that that's what it would be in a nutshell. Um, so if you can allow just the natural consequences of things to happen, um, then you will save yourself that extra pain from having to uh, 
put that pain on somebody else yourself. You know what I mean? But does that make sense? So the Lord will make sure those kinds of things happen because he's not going to prevent those things, right? But it's like the wicked's going to destroy the wicked. So just let it, let it go that way. And then you don't have to worry about that stuff. Even though I'm sure Alma and Amulek probably still have nightmares about that day. Okay, verse 4. And among the Lamanites who were slain were almost all the seed of Amulek and his brethren who were the priests of Noah. And they were slain by the hands of the Nephites. Good. Good. Good job. And the remainder, having fled into the east wilderness and having usurped the power and authority over the Lamanites, caused that many of the Lamanites should perish by fire because of their belief. Look at that. For many of them, after having suffered much loss and so many afflictions, began to be stirred up in remembrance of the words which Aaron and his brethren had preached to them in their land. Therefore, they began to, to disbelieve the traditions of their fathers and to believe the Lord, and that he gave great power unto the Nephites, and thus were, and thus there were many of them converted in the wilderness. Okay, and it came to pass that those rulers who were the remnant of the children of Amulon caused that they should be put to death. Yea, all those that believed in these things. Now this martyrdom caused that many of their brethren should be stirred up to anger. There began to be contention in the wilderness. And there began to be contention in the wilderness. And the Lamanites began to hunt the seed of Amulon and his brethren and began to slay them. And they fled into the east wilderness. And be behold, they are hunted at this day by the Lamanites. Thus the words of Abinadi were brought to pass, which he said, concerning the seed of the priests whose cause that he should suffer death by fire. For he said unto them, what did, what did he say? Do you remember? What ye shall do to unto me shall be a type of things to come. Now, it's not just for King Noah. I always thought it was just for King Noah. But it's for all the King Noah's priests too, which is kind of sad, but that's going to happen. But aren't you so glad that Alma escaped that? Because he believed okay verse 11 and now abinadi was the first that suffered death by fire because of his belief in god now this is what he meant that many should suffer death by fire according as he had suffered and he said unto the priests of noah that their seed should cause many to be put to death in the like manner as he was and that they should be scattered abroad and slain even as a sheep having no shepherd is driven and slain by wild beasts, and not now behold these words were verified. For they were driven by the Lamanites, and they were hunted, and they were smitten. Take that, people. Okay, um, normally I don't like revenge, but I really didn't like those uh, priests of Noah. Okay, the seed of Amulon was, because uh, also, they like, didn't they like leave their wives and stuff? These, these men were weak. And then they like stole people. And Anyways, yeah. Weak men, that's what they get. The seed of Amulon was almost wiped out in these battles. Amulon was the wicked priest of Noah, who was the leader of the other wicked priests. <laughs> they had kidnapped the Lamanite daughters and the, yeah, see? And then weaseled their way into joining the Lamanites. And Amulon was even made a, a king over part of the land which gave him the power to make life hard for Alma and his people. These are his descendants. These Amulonite rulers ended up putting to death a lot of the Lamanite soldiers. Why? Because there was another awakening among them. See verse 6. Life was so hard and they were suffering so much that they began to be stirred up in remembrance of the words which Aaron and his brethren had preached. These Lamanites had not accepted the gospel when Aaron and the others were teaching in their cities. And they had not accepted it when the anti nephi Lehives gave up their lives. But now they are ready to believe, and many of them converted in the wilderness. There, excuse me, there are a lot of the stages, wait, there are a lot of stages of conversion happening among the Lamanites. Ooh, yeah. But these Amulonites did not like this, and they put them to death. The other Lamanites did not like that they began to hunt the seed of Amulon and slay them. Some were killed and others were driven into the wilderness. And all of this fulfilled the words of Abinadi, who said that they will be put to death and be scattered abroad. Now behold, these words were verified. Prophets' words are always verified. Facts. You do not want to mess with that. <clears throat> How 
when my indoor walk's not long. Now we're getting where it is. Okay, so let's see. We have verse 13 to 17. Hold on. Okay, and verse 13. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites saw that they could not overpower the, Lam the Nephites, they returned again to their own land. And many of them came over to dwell in the land of Ishmael and the land of Nephi and did join themselves to the people of God who were the people of anti nephi -Lehi. And they did also bury their weapons of war according as their brethren had. And they began, that's like a, it's kind of like joining a soror sorority or something. It's like, okay, if you want to be part of this group, you got to be willing to bury your weapons of war. I love that. Plus, I would have, I'd be scared of those peeps joining our group if they were still like wanting to hold on to them, right? I'd be like, uh, maybe you should bury those weapons, please. And then we won't be so scared of you. It's kind of like a drop in, in your trust bucket for that person. You know, it's like, are, are you really trustworthy? I want you to give those things up that were um, keeping you down before or that were making you make those bad choices, like bury those weapons. And then that helps me know that you're at least committed to the relationship, but also that you're putting that in there helps me to trust you just that teensy bit more. And so it's like a little bucket, a little drop in the trust bucket. So do those things that... Um, well, like our spouse, we want our spouse to do those things like after D-Day. We want our spouse to do those things that give us, those, give them those little um, drops of trust in that trust bucket because there's zero trust there when after D-Day, you're like, Psh, I don't even know who you are. I don't know how we're still married. This is crazy. But if you still want this, you got to do those things that are hard. You got to bury your weapons of war and it's going to help know that you're serious about the relationship and also that you're committed and also that um, it's going to help me know that I can trust you just a little bit more because of that. Um, okay, according as their brethren, and they began to be a righteous people and they did walk in the ways of the Lord and did observe to keep the command, keep his commandments and his statutes. See right there, like those, those people were committing sin where they had those um, wicked addictions and they were still able to change. And so there is that hope because of Jesus Christ that even though we make bad choices, we can still repent because Christ um, is there to help us. But we have to want to do that. Okay, so then verse 15. Yea, and they did keep the law of Moses, for it was expedient that they should keep the law of Moses as yet, for it was not all fulfilled. But notwithstanding the law of Moses, they did look forward to the coming of Christ considering that the law of Moses was a type of his coming and believing that they must keep those outward performances until the time that he should be revealed unto them. Now they did not suppose that salvation came by the law of Moses, but that, but the law of Moses did serve strength, to strengthen their faith in Christ. And thus they did retain a hope through faith unto eternal salvation, relying upon the spirit of prophecy, which spake of those things to come. Also, I really like that this this line right here it says but the law of moses did serve to strengthen their faith in christ what helps us strengthen our faith in christ what are those things that um that we do or that we have done in the past that help to strengthen our faith in christ and it, it like the law of moses was something that was supposed to help them come unto christ as soon as christ came right and then after Christ came, you could do away with the law of Moses. But there were things that they acknowledged that there were some things that helped them come unto Christ still. And that's okay. Like, I feel like there's a lot of religions out there that have different things that would allow me to come unto Christ. So when we went to Greece this past um, winter, we were able to go to a Catholic mass service. And it was all in Greek. And it was amazing. <laughs> But, like, that's not part of our religion. Like, it's not, like, first of all, I could not find more than two whole wards in the whole, in all of Greece. And we were nowhere near them. And there was no way for us to get there because we were on Santorini, which was an island, and off of Greece. And um, because we were there, it was like... Uh, there was no wards in Santorini, so we couldn't go when it was a Sunday. 
so anyway um so we so we just had to figure out what we could do that could bring us closer to Christ that would strengthen our faith in Christ and what was that we went to Catholic mass and it was fantastic and I think there's those things that we might think oh you know we can't do that because that's what the Muslims do or we can't do that because that's what the Catholics do or we can't do that because that's what the Jewish people do or we can't do that but if it can bring you closer to Christ or if it can strengthen your faith in Jesus Christ then it is okay to do that thing um, and so, I mean, I think I love like being able to see in different religions and different cultures, the things that do bring me to closer to Christ, because everybody has a little bit, everybody, everything typifies of Christ. And so if everything typifies of Christ, there's going to be some religions that typify of Christ too. And so anyway, that's, that was just like my little tidbit. And, you know, since we're supposed to learn out of the best books and things like that, you know, it's not, you don't just have to think, okay, only do the things that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints says to do or nothing, right? Like that's, that's not it. It's not just that. The, the gospel of Jesus Christ allows us to come closer to Christ because of, through covenants and through our religion, we get uh, priesthood ordinances and priesthood blessings and allow, and we're able to access blessings from God um, through his priesthood. However, there are other things that we can do that can still bring us closer to Christ. So, um, and I think that's so important for us to remember. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, we definitely need like temples and covenants that bind us to Jesus Christ. And that is why I'm still uh, member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, because that's the only religion on earth that has that connection to Christ, that has that link that I can have together with my family through his priesthood, and also together with Christ through his priesthood, because I can get baptized, and I can receive blessings, and all that through the priesthood um, of God. So anyways, just want to make sure that we know What's going on? Okay, and then verse 17, And now behold, Ammon and Aaron and Omner and Himni and their brethren did rejoice exceedingly for the success which they had had among the Lamanites, seeing that the Lord had granted unto them according to their prayers, and that he had also verified his word unto them in every particular. So these were righteous. Um, these were the righteous among the Lamanites that were being converted. Okay, so here's a little summary. Okay, so in verse 13, and now when the Lamanites return, many more of them joined themselves with the people of God. So even more are now converted, right? So in the beginning, Ammon and his brethren came to teach the Lamanites, and they suffered and persevered until their message was heard. Some Lamanites believed right away, others believed after the example of anti Nephi Lehi's, and what an example they were of their sacrifice, right? Others remembered the words they had taught and became believers in the wilderness, and now more joined. When they return home from battle, it look it took different things to convert different Lamanites. But look how at the harvest. But look now at the harvest. Yeah. So like um, in our ministering efforts, we might not see everyone be converted. And so I love the story of Ammon and his brethren because different people needed different things to become converted to the Lord. But we have different experiences and different things that bring us closer to him. And so sometimes we just have to be patient. And if you're a missionary, you have to be even more patient because, yep, you only have two years. But guess what? The Lord has had, is going to have and has had an eternity with this person. And so we have to look at the big picture like you're just planting those seeds of love and of friendship and of testimony. And you might not get to see the, the converted um, version of that person because it just might take that much longer for them. You know, some hearts are harder than others and some are just really sensitive to the spirit. So, so you have to remember like, you're going to have some that are awesome and some that are not. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not awesome. I guess they're all, we're all children of God. <laughs> just some of us see it more readily than others is all. Okay, verse 14 to 17 recap is you would think you were reading about the most righteous Nephites here, but these are the Lamanites. These are some of the best scriptures that describe the purpose of the law of Moses. The Lamanites 
were living that law because it was not yet fulfilled, but they knew it was a type of Christ coming. Now they did not suppose that salvation came by the law of Moses, but the law of Moses did serve to strengthen their faith in Christ. See, this was the purpose of the law of Moses. This was what many Jewish what many Jews did not understand. For many Jews, the law of Moses was all that mattered. So it became a stumbling block to them because they did not understand its purpose. But for the Lamanites, it was a stepping stone, bringing them closer to Christ. It was the same law, but different outcomes. Okay, so President Dallin H. Oaks, we're going to close with this quote, and then we'll read the read it later. The atoning sacrifice of Jesus, quote, 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 let's start that. Quote, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ opens the door for all men to repent and to come unto him. The book of Alma reports repentance and forgiveness even of those who had been a wicked and a bloodthirsty people. My message today is one of hope for all of us, including those who have lost their membership in the church by excommunication or name removal. We are all sinners who can be cleansed by repentance. To repent from sin is not easy, although Russell M. Nelson taught in a prior general conference. But the prize is worth the price. End quote. Oh, I love that so much. Uh, April 2019 General Conference. Okay. So, yeah, all men can repent. And, but the first step is to admit that you did something wrong. Because if you don't, then you're not going to want to repent because you're going to think you didn't do anything wrong. And then also, the second step is to um, want to make it right. Not just, hey, I repented. You know, but it's like, how can you deeply feel that repentance and that new connection with Christ? Okay, I'm going to go read that. Get the read it, live it. Hold on. Okay, here's the read it, live it. I'm sorry, it's so crooked. Okay. <laughs> it is when they look back over their experience that Ammon and his brethren realize the Lord has answered their prayers in every particular God deals in particulars. Watch for them. Okay, until Alma chapter 26, stay strong, warrior. Oh boy, who is this? Can you say hi? Say hi. hi. <laughs> wow. The angel is. But I really love that she's here because then she gets to hear my scripture reading. It's pretty fun. <laughs>